Hey, hey, everyone, and uh, welcome in or welcome back. It's a monkey mar. Before we get into this video, please make sure you click that subscribe button, the bell for notifications, and of course, the like. All right, guys, I've got two updates one on a Leticia Evil Stalk, and one on Briasia Terrell's mom speaks out. With that, guys, let's uh, get into it outbreak in her jail. A jailhouse coronavirus outbreak has delayed a hearing for a Colorado woman accused of murdering her stepson before transporting his remains across the country to Pace, Florida. A court judge determined that a motion hearing for Letitia Stout 37 was scheduled for last Thursday should be postponed after a COVID-19 outbreak at El Paso County Jail. The Gazette in Colorado Springs reports Stelk has been held at the jail since March when she was arrested for allegedly killing her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon. Fly high, G-Man. She's been charged with first-degree murder and related charges for allegedly killing Gannon with a knife or another sharp instrument in his bedroom in January. So we all know that story. So the El Paso County Jail has reported at least 690 COVID-19 affections among its inmate population, according to the Gazette. As a result, the jail has canceled all in-person visits Letitia was supposed to be evaluated by a psychiatrist the day before Halloween, but the outbreak postponed that visit. Letitia's attorneys requested Thursday's hearing to be delayed until at least December 14th so that the psychiatric evaluation can be completed. Local outlet KUSA reports. So that means that she still has not had the second psych evaluation by her a defense team and she's back sitting in the El Paso County Jail. The evaluation would be the second of its kind. Mm -hmm. A previous evaluation in September led Letitia being found competent to stand trial for Gannon's death and that was by the prosecution. Letitia is also accused of enlisting her 17 year old daughter to help cover up Gannon's murder. She allegedly ordered the teen girl to purchase carpet cleaner, trash bags, and other cleaning supplies. Letitia allegedly dumped Gannon's body off Highway 105 in Colorado's Douglas County before his body was later moved to Florida. And then it gets into that the stepmother was the last person to see Gannon alive before he vanished. She initially claimed that Gannon had gone to play with his friends and then portrayed herself as the victim of false rumors about her involvement. Letitia's public defenders Catherine Strobel and Kim Chalmers are not available for comment per office policy. Letitia claimed in May that she is innocent of all charges filed against her. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I am almost done with the next part of the Letitia Evil family tree. And it will be out before this weekend. 11 of the 1,246 inmates in custody last Sunday tested positive for COVID-19 along with 73 employees. Ew. The El Paso County Sheriff's Office says two of the employees were hospitalized over the weekend as coronavirus cases surged at the facility. The Gazette reports that spokeswoman Deborah Minnett did not disclose the status of the two employees who were hospitalized or if they were civilian employees or deputies, citing privacy concerns. Officials first reported the outbreak October 26th when eight inmates tested positive, Manit compared the outbreak to a wildfire and said officials are trying to control further spread. November 1st, 2020, at the request of the EPCSO, CDPHE deployed a rapid response team 
comprised of Colorado National Guard soldiers to facilitate widespread testing of inmates at the jail. They collected 1,028 samples on that day. Letitia Stauk, who was charged with first-degree murder in the murder of her 11-year-old stepson Gannon, is housed at that jail. Her attorneys filed a motion asking for the next hearing. They argued that a second competency situation is going to contract a COVID. They really need to get her into the courtroom and get her to trial and get this going because I don't know about you guys, but I am convinced that she is guilty. But I want to know about the Florida connection and what brought her to pace. And like I said, the next part of Letitia Evil's tree will be out before this weekend. Let's get into Briasia Terrell. People ask me, Mar, why does the Briasia Terrell case bother you so much? Why? Because of this. This little girl and her brother went to spend the night at the little boy's father's house, Briasia's stepbrother, and the little boy comes home and Briasia doesn't. And the mom talks to her by text, Good night, I'm going to bed. The man is sitting in jail, Henry Earl Dinkins, and nobody knows or even says what was the last time they saw her. Where was she going? Was she in the house? Was she out of the house? I think the investigation on this case bites a big monkey balls. All right, so this came out a couple of days ago. So it's an article with Briasia's mom. Asia Lankford. Now, before I say what I'm going to say, and I read this article from Asia Terrell's mom, Asia Lankford, I do not, do I think that Asia hurt her daughter or did something to Asia Terrell or knows where Asia is right now? I don't know, but I feel that she knows more than what she's saying. Or maybe they need to say more than what everyone is saying. So let's get into this article. I can't wait until she is actually in my arms. Briasia's mother remains hopeful that missing daughter will return home. It's been four months since Briasia Terrell vanished. The 10-year-old was last seen July 10th, 2020. Her family still has no answers. She was last seen on 53rd Street in Davenport. Her mother, Asia Langford, feels the pain every day. Local 4 News spoke with Langford one-on-one -on -one Tuesday. She says, it's horrific not knowing where Briasia is. The last few months have been the longest of Asia Langford's life. It's been hectic for all these seasons to come and she's still not here said Langford. It's been four months of praying for Briasia's a safe return with searches coming up empty and questions with no answers. It's about getting the word out, getting her face seen and keeping her name everywhere. She says she recently began counseling after rampant rumors and allegations begin swirling on social media. It's definitely hit a hard spot for me, says Linkford. To help her get through tough times, she turns to her purple notebook, which is her daughter's favorite color. Nearly every one of one, two, three days since her daughter went missing. Linkford writes letters to Briasia, Dinkins, and documents every detail leading to her daughter's disappearance. I write in my book a lot, so when she comes home, she'll be able to know this is what my mom is going through. And what she says and what she was thinking. When my hands get tired, I just type in my phone, says Langford. She still holds on to hope that she'll one day be reunited with her daughter. I mean, I think about it every day. I write about it every day. I can't wait until she is actually in my arms. Her birthday is coming up next month. You know, the kid's birthday, those type of things are definitely touchy, says Langford. I don't know. I'm just feeling the it and the kids and those types of things. Something with her I'm not feeling. I wish that Aisha Langford would email me. My email is in the description. I would love to speak to Aisha Langford about the night that Briasia Terrell went missing and what Henry Earl Dinkins is saying because she had to have known his past and he's got a big past. Am I accusing her of doing something to her daughter? Absolutely not. Just feel like, 
I don't know, something is a little off in my opinion, but I don't know. So then she says she has to be strong for Briasia. Langford says, I mean, just keeping that faith alone, that's enough to push me on. There will always be a walk for Briasia to maintain awareness. And let it be known that the Quad Cities is not giving up until Briasia is found. People will gather in unity at 10 a.m. Saturday, November 14th, 2020 at 2700. 53rd Avenue, where it was reported that Briasia was last seen at Henry Earl Dinkins apartment complex. I wish I lived near Davenport, Iowa, because I would definitely be there for that walk. I don't know if anybody that watches in Davenport, Iowa, but I would love a video of the Briasia walk. Okay, so people can make signs or posters and wear a t-shirt with her name. There will be a second peaceful gathering walk for Briasia on Sunday, November 15th from noon to 2 p.m. at Van Deerver Park in Davenport. And that's the park with the big swan that Henry Earl Dinkins was mentioning to Briasia's mother. And I believe they searched that park. And they searched the waterways, and I did put that in a prior. I really pray they find a little Briasia Terrell. And guys, that is all the updates I have on the cases that I follow. So with that, it is a wrap. I want to thank you all for coming in. Thank you for uh, watching. Please like or dislike, whichever you prefer. And uh, subscribe. Everyone have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world and stay vigilant and happy Veterans Day.